for taking the time to join us today. I will first address some logistical issues for the session and then introduce our speakers, Forrest Breifogel and Rick Hain. A lot of material is planned for this one-hour webinar, so the audio will be muted for the remainder of the presentation to ensure that we are able to get through the entire presentation in the time allowed. We will not be able to hear you, but you will be able to hear both Forrest and Rick. Do not let this stop you from sending questions to us during the presentation. If we are unable to answer your question, either during or at the end of the webinar, we will email you with a response. I will now introduce our presenters, Forrest and Rick. Forrest is a professional engineer and ASQ fellow. He has authored or co-authored 13 books, published over 150 technical articles, and recently completed a five-book set, Integrated Enterprise Excellence. Forrest was named Quality Professional of the Year in 2011 by Quality Magazine. In 2013, he was presented the Leadership Award at the Lean and Six Sigma World Conference. Rick has over 20 years of Lean and Six Sigma experience as a practitioner and is one of Smarter Solutions senior instructors. Through his career, he has certified as a Master Black Belt, Black Belt Champion, and a Yellow Belt, along with teaching and certifying professionals in all the Lean Six Sigma areas. He is a master degree statistician and has worked in all levels of the business from entry level up to a site engineering manager. Both Forrest and Rick's life experiences and skills will provide you with a wonderful discussion. Again, thank you for joining us today. Okay, this is Forrest and uh, Rick will be uh, tuning in here too as we go through this presentation. Why would businesses uh, get involved in process management? I've got a couple quotes here, two, three quotes to be more specific, that talk about this. Okay. Well, one of the reasons might be to manage through the processes. Well, wow, that sounds good, doesn't it? Because obviously processes are what leads to outcomes throughout the business. Another statement talks about we can improve customer satisfaction, product quality, delivery speed, Time to market, boy, that's good stuff too. Who can argue with that? Wikipedia also has something to say about this. This talks about improved efficiencies and effectiveness, and also it breaks down some of the traditional hierarchical management approach. Well, that sounds pretty good too, because guess what can change over time? Well, the hierarchy can change, but fundamentally our systems to actually do whatever we do, build hospitals or bridges, don't change over time. So uh, it seems like it would be a better idea to go in and manage through the, the system as opposed to just the hierarchy management approach. So all those things sound pretty good. So BPM can provide some uh, good benefits, I think, is that we can have some standardized practices. Nobody can argue with that, I think. We can have automatic workflows. Well, that sounds pretty good, too. We can reduce maybe some labor costs reduce error rates and things like that. Also, customer experience, improved improvements on that. Well, I mean, our customers are obviously who's paying our, our salaries and so on, so we really want to make them happy so we can generate more revenue, something else we can't argue with. And also, we can get greater business efficiency. But you know, a lot of those, or those of those four things, uh, three of them, have been addressed uh, previously, TQM and uh, Lean and Six Sigma. Uh, automatic workflows is something maybe we're adding more to business process management than we've done in the past. I guess we come back to the basic statement, how could any business not want these things? What do you think about this, Rick? Do you have any other comments to bring to this? No, I think that's the big point to it, Forrest, is that it, right now BPM is the new thing. It's been around for a number of years if you've been in the business as re-engineering and other, other things. But I mean, how could you not want these games? There's a, the software systems out there selling it pretty hard. But I think what we're here to talk about today is it isn't as easy as it may look. The benefits are great, but let's go for it and talk some more about what are the real risks with taking this step? Because it isn't like all business systems. It isn't a walk through the park. Okay, so in some of the risks that we're, uh, Rick was alluding to is that we can go in and spend a lot of time and 
energy and wasted expense on uh, creating a software solution and an IT solution that uh, really is not helping the bottom line, the big picture. We can also get involved in wasted labor and training. I think Lean Six Sigma has done a lot of that, especially in some deployments, becomes more of a training program. So we put a lot of money in expectations, but it just did not turn out as, as well as we thought it should be. Sometimes we go in and do all this work, and uh, we got the same efficiencies that we had a couple years ago. Or we might even have somebody say through this deployment, we saved $100 million, but nobody can find the money. So that's uh, not a big excitement for executive management. It also become, come become the program of the month. Well, we don't want to get in that category. So, uh, you know, but we're suggesting that there's some good ways to, and structured ways to avoid these risks and have financial success along the way for both you and your company. Now, often we don't talk about you. We talk about your company. But we're going to suggest that's also important, too. I, now, I, all of us have seen stuff happen in business like this. It looks great, but when we get down to actually making it happen, you can talk about the business or the situation you're in. You don't quite do it right, and it doesn't get the gains. And the business moves on. But as Forrest said, it's more than just the business. What about you? Assume that you were chosen to lead this project. And it doesn't work out like we talked about in the last slide. What's at risk? Your reputation? Somewhat your future employment? But also, you may be put in a new job, lose influence, but at the end, it may affect your career. Now, if you do it right, the opposite can happen. Your career may bloom. I dealt with one of our clients last night and talking to them, they were explaining how they put on a BPM-like system to work with their management of their problem resolutions. The system didn't work well. They ended up throwing it out after a year, and the assigned manager got laid off. Now, that may not have happened in your environment, but that does happen if you get tied to a big, costly program that doesn't meet expectations. We want you to avoid that. Yes, I think it's uh, something that we've uh, uh, seen a lot personally, and I think that you can perhaps uh, uh, look at uh, situations that you might have encountered something similar to this for various types of deployments. So let's uh, look at some example in initiatives that may have turned out very poorly. Okay. Now, CompUSA was really doing a good job. They were doing a lot of work working on employee onboarding process. So they come out and acknowledge all the work that they've done and that they put together a whole new system. But guess what? It came out the same week that they filed for bankruptcy. Oh, my goodness. Was this a good uh, decision to spend all these resources working on this onboarding process? Well, obviously not. You know. A lot of people lost their jobs, and a lot of revenue was lost away. And perhaps uh, getting this new position has got to be somewhat of a challenge, too. Here's another one that um, I can relate to. Uh, was a bowling ball company. Uh, I was uh, at a, uh, a session that we had, and someone is talking about all the work that they had done in lean in this bowling ball company. And I said, well, gee, wasn't that uh, the same company that had a lot of financial problems? And they got in it bought out by a competitor because they were not meeting their uh, financial uh, needs. And the person said, well, we've been doing all this lean work. We've been really making all these improvements. I said, yeah, but you didn't really go in and achieve the financial success for the company as a whole to be uh, financial solvent and to flourish. So sometimes we get involved in answering the wrong question, and we need to really focus on doing process improvement activities that's going to help the enterprise as a whole. Let's we'll talk about this J.C. Penney story, Rick. Yeah, this one was a little more recent. And for those that are not in the United States, these examples do come out of our country. 
but I assume that you have similar experiences you've read in your news. JCPenney's is a big retailer. They provide clothing and household goods. They have fallen behind their competitors over the last number of years. So they brought in a, and put in a CEO that had come from Apple Computers. Apple, a company known for how they market in their innovative techniques, he just implemented what Apple would do in the retail industry. Spent a lot of money, redesigned stores, changed product lines, tried to change the whole philosophy, but it didn't fit the culture of pennies. The company lost more money, and he was fired in a little over a year. Now, they're in a tougher position than they were when they started. So again, they implemented a big policy that was to change the world. It worked in other places, but for some reason it failed. The leader of the effort lost their job. So it was a big risk. And we're proposing these three examples are somewhat related to a company diving into a business process management system and just assuming that all I got to do is implement it and everything will get better. And there is risk. Forrest? Yes, I think and these are just a couple examples of things that happen. And I think uh, no matter where you're at in the world, we can relate to uh, situations where things go in and we thought they were going to be better, but in reality where they're not. Um, and a lot of times when companies go in and uh, try to make major changes, uh, Jim Collins talks about in How the Mighty Fall, they try to get a new CEO and do something uh, really different and major, make a major change. But by that time, it's somewhat too late, and then they have a lot of difficulty. So there's risk in how you're getting involved in these things, and we're suggesting that there's ways of managing it. That's what we really want to talk about that. So what, what does it involve when you're uh, looking at managing risk? Uh, you know, you need to do some upfront pre-planning so that we make sure that we have less chance of making mistakes. You really would like to go in and quantify this overall risk rather than just uh, giving some sort of a, uh, a weak estimate, estimation, estimation of what it's going to be uh, doing. And then we want to have some structured approach to uh, risk management and what we might do to the, the, uh, reduce those issues that we might have. And then we want to take on and do the right thing so we're not committing huge amount of resources and we cannot go back to where we're at before. So we're suggesting that you can go in and put it all to, uh, together so we can manage that. Any other thoughts you got on this, Rick? Yeah, what you're going to see here is the start of the theme of this webinar. There are risks. But we're going to try to leave you with the thought that business process management is not a software initiative. It shouldn't be run from your IT department or information technology. There really is a lot of the business that needs to be worked on to make the business process management system successful. That's really where we're going with the risk, is understanding the business side of business process management. I mean, even think about the name, business, processes, and management. Nowhere in there does it say software. So let's walk through this and see and understand more about this process of bringing business process management in. This leads us to a question, and we want you to interact with us some. The question, do you think your company has a history of dealing with the personal risk in introducing no program? Assuming you were at your business, they assigned you to do business process management would they assign some level of personal responsibility in your company? So please pick one. Does your company have no risk, or is there a significant risk to a career if the program doesn't work? So please select one on your screen. Okay, we'll give you a couple more seconds here. And if you, you'll see it, people are doing it. It looks like we're having a, a pretty good decision on what will be the highest one. I think, Anna, if you can close it now. Okay. What you'll see is most of you that came up with there is some personal risk. But note that there's a good many of you that might be in a situation where they would assign a lot more responsibility to the leader than you might in your own company. But only about a fifth said there's no risk, and at some level that surprises me. 
Uh, in my experience, in the many places I've seen the work, there is a lot of responsibility assigned to the leader of a program. All right, let's move on. Okay, so one of the things that we're suggesting that's really important for the inter or for the system that you're uh, that you're implementing is to actually look at the bottleneck. And this is leading to the technique called theory of constraints. Now, it became real popular in the 90s, or initiated in the 90s, uh, and it's called TLC. It was by Elia uh, Goldratt and his popular book, The Goal. Basically, the idea behind it is that you really wanted to go in and figure out where your constraint is and focusing on that. Because if you're not really focusing on the constraint, a lot of times, even though we did some improvement, it doesn't help the big picture. Um, I want to give you an example of this. Is I was doing a keynote for a major defense contractor, and the general manager gave a presentation talking about how they had been doing so much work in lean. I said, okay, that's great. You know, and I toured their facility. I said, boy, you really have done a great job in lean here, but I noticed you've got a lot of idle equipment here. I said, it seems like to me your bottleneck is in sales and marketing. Or maybe our, what projects are you doing in sales and marketing to address that? They weren't doing anything. Well, that was their obvious bottleneck. So they could go in and do all the, the uh, improvements that they might be able to take on uh, doing lean. And they could have even done automation of particular processes. But that would not necessarily help the big picture anything significantly. So it's really important to address and look at the enterprise to determine where we ought to be focusing our improvement efforts. Now, you may wonder why we brought this up on a business process management webinar. But Smarter Solutions is really not your traditional consulting firm. What we really want to do is give people information. And we are a little bit of trainer in all of us. And we see that this whole concept of theory of constraints is really a really interesting piece of information when applied to a business process management introduction of facility, is it gives you concepts that help you target where you should apply it. Because my guess is business project management isn't needed in every part of your business. So we decided to throw in a little training in here in the middle of this webinar. So when we look at that, let's look at our examples we gave earlier. CompUSA, a computer retailer, they spent money on improving the onboarding or bringing on employees. Was that what was holding them back? Was that their constraint? Probably not, because they went out of business. The bowling ball company was the same thing. They made an efficient factory, but weren't selling. Were they using their resources on the best processes that needed improvement? And we can say the same for pennies. They may have been popular. The leadership may have really liked working on them. But if they would apply the theory of constraints to their business success, my guess is none of them would have been applying these tools in those areas of their business. So what are constraints? If I'm looking at my business, trying to decide where to apply business process management, which is expensive, I want to apply it where I'm, things are holding me back. Examples of constraints. If you've got a factory that has no customers, in other words, you're not selling your product, your constraint is sales. Improve your sales process. If there's a lot of overtime being done in another business, things are not being completed at time, my guess is your constraint is about the quality of your work or the capacity, how long it takes to do things. You would apply your business process management to those processes. And sometimes you can't provide products at the prices that are competitive. Again, apply it at your cost constraints, cost of doing business, labor rates. But again, if you look at it this way, you will apply these tools in the areas where you will get the quickest gain. And if you truly get gain, the risks to you and your business are smaller. OK, yeah, it's, I think this is really important message that's often get lost in uh, the BPM deployment, at least I have not seen it uh, as readily as uh, it does. It seems like theory constraints is very, very important, but it often uh, it becomes a deployment in itself. Hey, we're going to just work on theory constraints. 
Well, that's not the answer either in my mind. We really need to integrate that as part of this overall enterprise system to figure out where we should be focused in our efforts. So we just don't want to go in and, and lead from the tool like the old saying, you got a hammer, everything becomes a nail. What we really want to look at is a full toolbox of things that we have. And one of the important aspects of things that we want to look at and use is theory constraints to help us figure out where we should focus our efforts. Now, there have been some good things along the way. We've just been focusing on the, the deployments that didn't work so well. Like Starbucks, they introduced lean concepts in their stores. And they reduced their, the amount of staffing they had by one person. So it really aligned their efforts that they had, improved uh, the processes so that uh, the overall bottom line for the overall company um, uh, had a lot of uh, improvements to, associated with it. Another one is Target was having a lot of problems in its sales. It, again, it's a retailer store here very popular in the United States, but they were having a lot of problems. I mean, they were kind of with the Kmart, you know, which was having its difficulties too. But really what they did is they started looking at things differently on how they uh, had processes on selecting the particular merchandise that they sold in the stores, so it became more of an upscale retailer than it had previously. So you could compare it to Kmart, which really has had a lot of problems since then, where Target actually moved forward, because they were really looking at their overall constraint and really didn't play games with it, but addressed the issue head on. If I may, Forrest, these are also, Target was a competitor with J.C. Penney's, one of our earlier discussions. And both of them were hitting the current business environment and realizing they were falling behind to other competitors. But in this case, Target did what a business process management system would do. They analyzed their business, and they applied their new improved system thoughtfully, looking at constraints. They may have been a little bit slower getting there, but when they get there, they succeeded. And we're seeing these are analogies to how a business process management should be applied in your organization. All right. So what we would like to look at business process management. We're proposing one of the ways to reduce risk, apply it to your constraints. Now that's a real benefit. You don't want to improve things that are not holding you back. I mean, it may be nice. You might increase the capacity of an area that doesn't need it. But how do you do it in the area where you have a constraint or a bottleneck or something that is holding back your success. Well, you do it just like you would do any other program like this. You go look at your performance. You use analytics to identify your constraints, and then apply the methods strategically aligned to your success. Now, what we're introducing a term that you may not have heard of here called enterprise process management. But it really is a part of business process management that the software vendors don't always talk to you about. So we're going to talk a little bit about the business management that has to go behind or, say, supporting of this automation of workflows that the software vendors want. If you do this right, you won't be a CompUSA. You'll be a Starbucks. You won't be JCPenney's. You'll be a Target. Now that's what we're looking for. We want you to do this right, be efficient with your money, and succeed. Now, if you begin this path by buying software, in the Lean Six Sigma world, we would really say, you chose the solution, now you're trying to find a problem to fit it. We don't want you to do that. We want you to understand your business and pick the solution that fits you. Now, it may sound simple, and it really is. It's just a little different plan than you might get if your goal is to implement software to do BPM. You can do all this. All of you listening to this phone call have the ability to go do this with a little bit of guidance and some thought. So you can do this, and you may not need the most expensive software suite out there. Once you look at your business, you might be able to save some money and not do something that's complex. So that's what we hope you'll be.
So BPM what really BPM can really is. Yeah, BPM can provide a lot of benefits, and it addresses uh, some of the uh, the benefits that uh, Rick was just describing. But you really need to look at our, our, our minds to uh, integrate this within the overall enterprise process management piece, and by doing that, then BPM can provide you know simplifications of the workflows. Uh, you can manage your processes. You know, and so you can deal with optimizations of those, and you can have monitorization of it. So you can have automatically looking at the data, so it becomes re uh, real obvious on where efforts need to be focused on. And so we really think it's important to go in and have a system where that you integrate this within the overall enterprise process management piece of this. Otherwise, you end up having silos activities and you're not really integrating everything together. So uh, improvement efforts in a silo may sound beneficial uh, in that silo, but overall it may not have much benefit as a whole. Now if we go in and look at what's considered in the uh, BPM body of knowledge, you know, the ABPMP provides a framework for putting this all together. And this is a graphic that's taken from that, uh, that book. But you notice in here, we've got process modeling, analysis, design, and so on. And that falls under the business process management piece. But notice how we also got enterprise process management, and then we have the technologies. So the technologies is not the driving piece of it. It's one of the solutions that you can actually have for putting this all together. But the piece that we think is missing often is this enterprise process management piece, and we often focus more just on the BPM aspect of it. To give you an idea uh, or an example of that, one of our, our customers, we've been helping them uh, help uh, implement process improvement efforts, and I mentioned to uh, her that we were um, helping people more move towards the BPM. And she was making the statement that in her organization, BPM is a, got somewhat of a negative connotation because all that they're doing in their company with that effort is doing flow charting. Well, we're suggesting it needs to be a lot more than just flow charting. It's not an IT solution either. It's, it's a matter of hooking everything together. And one of uh, the approaches we're going to be talking about is how you do that with a, a structured enterprise process management approach. You got other thoughts on this, Rick? Yeah, I think that this picture does show where the risk generally arrives from. We see when we look at BPM, the five blocks in the middle, those are the skills that you bring into your company to do business process management. And I think everybody agrees. I mean, the business process management professionals organization is pretty clear that these are good skills, but the skills alone aren't enough. You have to wrap around it a business management system that can support this and apply it properly. And I think this is the risk of not doing the whole thing. So that's what we're talking about here. Now, again, I, we brought up enterprise process management, and it may be new. But this is the pick, this is the diagram of why we see that as the key point for success in the elimination of risk. The enterprise business management system is what provides support to your business process management. Think about that as the running of the business, the enterprise. But business process management is really about executing a business process. So each process gets managed, but it's the business system, the management, the policies, and even the measurement of it that helps you decide how the management should be done. The business process management helps the workforce do their job properly to meet your customer's needs. So really, you pull out any one piece or do not develop it sufficiently, and the other pieces may not succeed. Yes, I think, are you ready for this? Yeah, one of the things that uh, Rick uh, mentioned in there that I wanted to highlight uh, is policies. You know, I think that that's a very important aspect of when we're talking about improving the enterprise as a whole. A lot of times in BPM we call it the rules. And I'm su suggesting, or we're suggesting, is that you need to look at the enterprise process management to figure out what the rules are 
that you need to have to effectively manage your business as a whole. An example of that might be is that uh, the compensation um, alignment of uh, the sales force to the business needs as a whole may be driving the wrong kind of behaviors. You know, we might be trying to meet quarterly numbers, and then they, all of a sudden we have sales that are picking up near the end of the quarter that's uh, driving a lot of uh, activity in manufacturing, which leads a lot of overtime. And uh, the end result of it is we have more defects and we have uh, uh, less on-time delivery problems and so on. Or we have more on-time delivery problems and so on. So the point is, is we really need to go in and look at the enterprise uh, system as a whole to develop the rules that are actually going to be beneficial to the organization as a whole. And I think that's a piece that's often missed in uh, BPM deployments and also uh, Lean Six Sigma and other process improvement efforts as well. So, in, but one of the things that we've noticed in the enterprise process management in the body of knowledge book, there's really no real guidance provided to actually how you integrate this enterprise process management piece within the overall system, and how does DPM integrate also within this overall system uh, as well. So we think that that's a very important piece that really need to be considered so that you reduce the risk of having a, a BPM deployment that's not as successful as you would like it to be. So how can it be beneficial? We might say we can wait on the EPM piece of it, but is there some risk associated with that? We might be able to have automation of workflows. Uh, we can have some standardizations along that. We might re be able to reduce some cost, but is that going to go in and guarantee success with our overall deployment? You know, often maybe we have some issues with actually putting this all together within the overall system. You got some other thoughts with this, Rick? Yeah, this is always the question that businesses get. They may see a problem in front of them. They believe business process management would help it. They really don't need the enterprise management at this point to deal with their biggest problem. But as soon as they work that, the question is, what else should be done? And that's where most of these business programs work themselves out of business. They start applying in areas that there's no benefit. And I think at some level, as we have in red, the business culture sometimes will kill programs off quite rapidly if they defend the current system. And as the last slide before this said, if your business system was really in good play, in a good place, you probably didn't need business process management. A lot of times we're trying to put this in to make up for enterprise or whole business management issues, and it is just a tool. So really, that's it. You want to guarantee success, you really have to wrap a good business system around it. And we've seen this before. A lot of the client, we had, we had a client recently who was really doing a business process management introduction in his business. It was a financial and institution. They assigned it to the IT or the software organization, and they came up with their mantra, lean before digitize. Digitize meaning automating the workflow. So it was all led by IT. They saw it as a software issue. IT owned it, and they just made a goal of automating every workflow in the whole business. They had their goal, but right now they're struggling because nobody wants it anymore. And they didn't align it to the business needs. So the IT group thinks they're quite successful and the business is holding them back, but the business is saying, we don't need this in everything. So the question is, where will they be in another two years? Will they end up like a bowling ball manufacturer that optimized and digitized everything, but the cost of it put them out of business? We don't know. So really, improving things that are not constraints, going back to the theory of constraints, may not be a real improvement. It may not help your financials. 
And the question, I, would you want your career tied to a project like this? And I would say, not me. I sure wouldn't want to be an IT group pushing automated workflows onto the business that doesn't want it. Yeah, one of the things here, we're talking about tying your career to actually doing CTM or not. But one thing that we haven't really talked about is that sometimes somebody might draw the conclusion, well, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to push BPM because that's going to be risk for me at a personal level. But we also have a risk personally if we don't do anything. We may do everything that our management or uh, what, is told, what is being told to us to do, but is that enough? We need to go in and also nowadays, uh, because of the old job market and how things are going, we need to be cognizant that we need to really focus in on what's going to help the enterprise as a whole. So, but we need to do that in a very systematic and a conscientious way. Just by going in and saying we're going to avoid risk by not doing anything, not doing VPM, not suggesting lean or whatever, that's not risk-free either. So I think that's something else we need to consider within this overall risk. Uh, evaluation perspective. Got another polling question here for you. We'd like for you to look at the risk associated with uh, your new program. Uh, what is your opinion about no personal risk or a small amount or there is personal risk or maybe a significant risk. So we got the poll open so let's see uh, where it, we might get from this. Uh, thanks for answering the questions. Again, a little interaction to make sure everyone is paying attention. Yes, okay. So, uh, okay, I guess uh, we'll close the poll here. Let's see what it came out to be. So this is our discussion of enterprise process management. It looks like some of you, it's a split between never heard of it and heard of it. So I guess that's a on the statistician side, we got a pretty random guess there. And a few of them talked about the business understands. Now, I believe that, fit, that fourth choice is the one that we're really targeting. Businesses really need to understand the risk involved of not doing your enterprise process management. Thank you for that, Ann. So what we're suggesting is that uh, how can BPM provide an enterprise benefit? So we want to go in and create a system or suggest a system that we can accelerate the process so that we can go in and determine where the constraint is. We want to have a systematic approach to actually accomplish that. So sometimes it seems like people approach this issue in somewhat of a haphazard way. What we'd like to do is have a system that really goes in and approaches this uh, systematically so that um, uh, it becomes no doubt where efforts ought to be focused so that the enterprise, again, as a whole benefits. So we really want to have it so that we're not having a deployment such that the executives in a certain period of time do not see the benefits of the deployment, and then it gets canceled along with other programs of the past. And, and, and within our company, I think it's 23 years we've been working, but we've seen this situation happen over and over in companies with Lean Six Sigma with the best of intentions. The thing fails because they didn't build an infrastructure around it to support it. And we really believe BPM does not have to follow that same path. And that's why we're here today. Yeah, I think one of the... Uh situations that can lead to failure, failures is that you may have a strong leader that's pushing Lean Six Sigma or BPM or some other deployment, and they may be successful, not so much of the deployment, but because of the leader. And if that leader moves on, then the thing is the deployment itself uh, can suffer and maybe get canceled because of that. And so we're trying to create a long-lasting system so that it's not dependent upon the brilliance 
of a leader in particular, but the system itself will carry itself uh, uh, down the years. So this really gets to the question, is BPM an IT or a business initiative? Smarter Solutions strongly believes that it's a business initiative that the software and the IT group supports it. It is not an IT initiative. Now if you get most vendors out there and if you search on business process management on the internet, nearly all of the top entries are software companies selling you their software. Now if you focus on the IT, we're not sure that if you'll, they'll end up putting the business system you need behind it. Now why do they do that? Well that's their expertise. They're IT people. And if you weren't sure about it, go look at job postings for business process management. It's all programmers. It's all tied to software. Right now the push is not for the business management piece. It's only for the automation piece. And you should wonder why. And I guess part of it, there's more money in software. And once they sold you the software, there's not much investment in your success. They've made their money. So we do believe it's business. So who's the best advocate for business process management in your organization? Is it the business or is it the software people? Now we, it's true, many of the big benefits from business process management can be made with software, but honestly, most of the true change in your organization that drives success will not be the software pieces. It's understanding the process. It's knowing how to measure it. It's knowing how to make decisions. Business process management is not the answer. It's just one of the tools. If we go back to a Lean Six Sigma term, again, software companies are giving you the solution. Now let's fit your problem to it. I'm not sure if that's always the best path to go. For the companies we work with, we tell them to slow down on the software and build the solid enterprise process management system to understand their true requirements for the software and the workflow automation. And then you can make a thoughtful decision on the right level of software to procure. Because you may not need a big one. You may need a middle tier one is all you need. And in a few cases, the business only needed to automate a single workflow to meet their needs. Why bring in a whole BPM suite? There's simpler answers. So again, being thoughtful gets you to the right answer. Maybe slower, but it sure is more efficient. So now we get to the next poll. What's the maturity of your system? Now we don't know. Some of you are here to get better at BPM. Some may be, some may be just investigating it, but your company. Where are they on the BPM system right now? It's interesting, are many of you at the point that you're just beginning? Or are some of them relatively implemented and looking to get better? Thank you for doing it. We'll keep this open for a few more seconds. But it looks like a majority of you are early in the process. <clears throat> now, if you can close the poll, you'll see that Half of you are just beginning the process and really haven't started. Well, that's great. Because you know what? Even if you're at the end significantly implemented, this isn't that you don't start this way, you fail. What we're talking about can still remove the risks that exist in a, a system in a business today. So again, thank you very much. We're getting close to finishing the webinar. Now nobody's really asking any questions so far. If there is something that we've talked about that you don't understand, the little box on the upper right hand side of your screen should allow you to type in questions that we would love to answer them. So back to the webinar. What we're proposing and what we branded is something called Integrated Enterprise Excellence. It's what we have titled the Enterprise Business Process Management or EPM system. This system has been used before in many places, but it helps you find your constraints. It helps you set strategies to improve them. 
and it really helps you understand performance measurement, which I guess we haven't talked about much in business process management, but at some level is intended to create data, performance measures, that your business can use in the management system to make decisions and really doing them all together, that is part of the enterprise man the EPM or enterprise performance management system that helps you make better business decisions and apply your BPM properly. I think one of the things that is not um, highlighted enough in my mind anyway in the body of knowledge book is the importance of the the measurements, at least the number of words that uh, are given to that particular topic. So it's really important to figure out what you're going to be tracking, but also how you're actually going to report it so that it leads to the best and the most appropriate behaviors. Because a lot of times we're seeing that the reporting of metrics throughout the organization are really dependent upon individual preferences on what's maybe easy to track relative to the data, and also how they report it is somewhat uh, dependent upon which particular charting methodologies or reporting methodologies an individuals prefer. And I think that's one of the other pieces that we think is very important as part of this integrated enterprise excellence system. So we want to create a system of measurements that's tied to this enterprise process management that leads to the right behaviors. We call it the three R's of business. Everybody doing the right things, doing them right at the right time. So really the IEEE system is really focusing on the enterprise as a whole. And if you're dealing with a for-profit company, what we're really looking at is the financials. We're trying to create strategies that are to make the financials improve. So we can improve growth and we can also improve profitability. So we're trying to also uh, uh, minimize the capital expenditures that uh, the organization is going to be undertaking and fundamentally decide what should be done right so that the business as a whole benefits. And we're focusing really on areas of business that need to improve and also rules that maybe need to be changed so again, that the big picture sees the benefit of everything that we're doing. And that's what gets appreciated in the end by the executives. With this overall approach, we're suggesting is that you may actually do less automation. Um, and, but if whenever you are doing automation, you're actually creating that, those automated processes so that the business as a whole benefits and it's not a siloed activity that may look good in that particular area of the business, but it does not benefit the enterprise as a whole. So with this overall approach, we're suggesting that there's going to be less issues of DPM having problems and that you're going to uh, also have and implement a solution that's going to be positive as opposed to having a risk for uh, having career-limiting decisions that you made along the way relative to this BPM deployment. We got any other thoughts on this, Rick? No, I think that's covering it for us. So through this overall approach, we're suggesting that uh, you may actually delay the automation of your processes, but in the end that you're going to be doing something that's a little bit more beneficial to the enterprise as a whole and will be appreciated and have much more likelihood of being something that's long-lasting uh, as the years roll past. So well, some people uh, may have already started implementing a BPM solution, they might say, well, this is uh, too late. I'm already automating my process. And what we're suggesting, that's not the case, that you can go in and take on this approach that we're suggesting here, uh, whether you're just a new person or a new organization undertaking BPM or that you've been established uh, using uh, whatever approach that you did to the initial implementation of it. 
and so that the uh, benefits of this approach is that there's a, a more chance of that you're going to be doing the right things in the future relative to this overall deployment. That's right. It's never too late to do it right. Yep. And at some level, if you're worried about risk to career, if you find you're in a business that's already started, you apply some of these concepts, you may be able to give advice to the leadership that improves your current deployment and actually gains you credibility within your business. So this really can be dropped in at any time to help your implementation. Yes. So what is this overall DPM, DPM system? Uh, it's basically a structured methodology that uh, has one of the core competencies or core methodologies is built upon the uh, extension of Porter's value chain. The IWE system that we've been alluding to is basically a nine-step system where you start with your vision and mission is step number one, and step number two leads to this overall we call the IWE value chain, which is the extension of uh, Porter's value chain. And with this, uh, the value chain, it describes what you do and how you measure what you do, which is, um, I think, very important. A lot of times what happens is we'll have scorecards created in the north wing of the building and people working on process improvement in the south of the wing of the building and they don't talk to each other. Well, with this overall IWE value chain, what we're doing is uh, putting those two wings of the building together. So we're having uh, our processes aligned with the overall metrics of how we're going to be measuring those processes. Now, in addition, we're looking at the measurements of those processes so that they're predictive. So it's uh, very much in a structured fashion on how you look at these metrics. And basically, everybody would uh, fundamentally create the same pharma metrics and also have the same reporting structure from that. Then other steps of the nine-step overall business system is where you would analyze the enterprise as a whole to determine where we ought to be focusing our improvement efforts. And again, improvement efforts could be changing the rules on how we're actually running the business and how we're creating compensation systems and so on. Basically, there's a uh, no sacred cows with this overall approach. And then what we want to do is establish business goals that uh, are realistic or financial goals and then have strategies that are aligned to uh, meeting those objectives which lead to improvement projects and also uh, what we call uh, metrics of operational metrics so that the process owners are going to be asking for projects to uh, improve their particular areas of the business because that's been identified something that's important to business. So we may be working, for example, in the sales area because we've got excess capacity or from this using theory constraints we might need to go in and to lean some operations, operations so that we uh, have more benefits from that. So basically this overall system kind of pulls it all together so we're actually putting uh, improvement efforts so that we uh, benefit the enterprise as a whole. Hey, Boris. I've got a question I wanted to ask you. What role in the organization should someone start looking um, when trying to implement the IEE or BPM? Well, I think the one of the things is what we've been describing here is the whole enchilada here. And we're suggesting is that you could go in and take one piece of this overall IWE system and start um, uh, implementing that, and then that leads to the overall big picture. Um, but I think it's, uh, you know, so in order to convey this to somebody else, that you might look at, hey, how we're looking at creating measurements and so on. So just look at, and we can have discussions on this, on how is it best to go in and take this big enchilada that we're just describing here and be able to convey it to others, decision makers or influencers in your organization so that they can see the benefit of this approach to uh, uh, their overall organization as a whole. So hopefully that... Now one more thing on that one. It, it, your role at some level defines where you are today. If you're one of the business managers, I think I'd look at it different than if you're in the workforce. 
if you're in the workforce and you really sort of understand this, I think one thing you could do right away is look where BPM is being introduced into your business and ask them to measure its impact. Uh, try to understand why did they choose that location. Are they trying to reduce labor? Are they trying to, to go faster? Are they trying to reduce mistakes? What is it? And try to get your company to measure the impact of each implementation so that you can show benefits right away. <clears throat> and you do this to ensure that the automation is not the benefit. It's the result of it is what the benefit is. You do this a couple times and they will pull you into the organization because you're showing the benefit to the company. Yes, I think that's a good point that you're bringing up there, Rick, is that you want to uh, look at where the pain is in the organization as a whole, uh, especially for the decision makers, and really try to figure out um, how you can really address those pains using uh, this type of system to help them along the way. A very good point. All right. So what are we talking about? Forrest has talked about it some to this point. We really see that we're not asking for something that isn't already talked about in the BPM world, but we're just seeing the what we're calling the integrated enterprise excellence piece, the mixture of the business process management with the enterprise side. We see it as a logical extension. It doesn't change your current initiative. We think it, it reduces the risk of failure. It improves the risk of success. Now, it's not revolutionary. What we're talking about here is, is really putting together activities that are done in every business every day. We just don't think everybody thought that it should be part of the business process management world. But either way, no matter how you look at it, the only reason you do this is to improve your business. I do not believe business process management was meant to be career support for the IT group. You wouldn't have spent the money if it wasn't to get better. So what are our big advantages? Well, the EPM, BPM system provides a structure to optimize your workflows and provide automation where needed. It does provide the management structure to support the BPM so that they'll apply it properly and make the right decisions to ensure that you're applying it so that it drives strategic gain and supports the purpose and vision of the company. Doing it with the way we suggest also removes the risk that you spend a lot of money and do not get a lot of gain and again hurt your career. which is the real point of it, isn't it? Nobody's working just to have fun. We want this to be successful. We want ourselves to be successful along with our company. So what would be your next steps? Take a look at your current business system. Do you believe it provides enough support for a business process management system introduction to your company? Will the current business system identify the constraints and apply it properly? Uh, if you don't think it is, we offer a lot of resources at Smarter Solutions, both on our website, which the address is at the bottom, or give us a call. We have here the U.S. phone number. We're also available in Skype if you want to send us an email at info at smartersolutions.com. We can do a lot of stuff for you, but we won't give you software. We'll help you understand how your business system can be optimized to support a business process management introduction. Now, thank you all for your time. I hope it was worth the one hour we spent. Hey, Rick, we got one more question here. Great. Okay, Ann, why don't you, I'll let you take it on. Okay. What KPIs are special to this approach versus regular BPM? Now, that's an interesting one. The whole discussion that's is an, yeah, that's an to your business. <laughs> My guess is there would not be any, I'll say, a BPM KPI. The BPM should be applied to the key process indicators that your business already knows exist. So I don't, like, I would never put a, a business process management metric on how, much, how many processes it's applied to. 
or how far along I am in introduction of software, because that's not what it's about. Your key process indicators that BPM should use are, did sales grow? Did operating costs get reduced? Did my time to complete the process or the transaction reduce? Those are the KPIs that you should be using for BPM. Because if you're not fixing those, why are you doing BPM? So I don't think there are any special ones. Thank you for the question. Yeah, I think just adding on to that one here, the, the, I think one of the, maybe the person's asking instead of KPIs is the big differentiators. I don't know, maybe that's why I interpret the question a little bit differently. Uh, is, is I th if we look at it that way, I think one of the things that we're doing here is more of a structured approach uh, of, of integrating all the body of knowledge topics, uh, putting them together so that, one, we are identifying KPIs that really is going to benefit the enterprise as a whole. So I think that there's a, a kind of a whole enterprise approach on how we put together the KPIs and select them within the organization, and I think that's one of the big differentiators for what we do. So as, as Rick said, we're really um, uh, glad that you attended this webinar, and uh, if you got other questions and we may be able to help you on your journey, please don't hesitate about giving us, uh, giving us uh, or contacting us. Thanks, everybody.